I thought I'd start off the day today with a quick view of outside the studio here. It's a nine o'clock in the morning, Sunday, and uh, the sheep are happily grazing out there. And uh, it all looks very pastoral and uh, serene, doesn't it? Apart from the fact my window needs cleaning. Um, and then inside the studio, we have a scene of peace and quiet as well, with uh, two of my dogs here, Ruby on the right, who gets me up at five o'clock every morning. Actually, it was quarter to five this morning. Thank you, Ruby. Makes me make the best of the day. This is Lottie. Say hi, Lottie. With my beautiful golden retriever. Yes, it's you. Yes, you're such a good girl. And then down here we have Zen, who is asleep, or pretending to be. Are you pretending to be asleep, Zen? Say hello. Hello. He's a good boy. Zen is a rescue that we have had a couple of years now. He's a cross between a, we think, Jack Russell and a Brittany Spaniel, because we live in Brittany and they're very common here. Little hunting dog, but he's very sweet. I'm just wondering about the dis disappearance of one of our chickens yesterday. But we won't speak about that. And then, um, oh yes, look. Here is our silver play button on the shelf. And hello, Mor oh, I nearly called him Morris. We used to have a ginger cat called Morris, but this is Arthur. Hello, Arthur. Where's your brother, Frankie? So this gives you a, a glimpse of our world here. And uh, the, what made me think of doing this was because I looked at my desk and um, I thought, uh, huh, I've got to make a video now. What am I going to do with this? This is the state of disarray that you don't normally see. Today we're going to be painting something like this. This is a photocopy actually. This is the original and we're going to paint something similar to that in a slightly different way. Not using the Kuretake set but using these. Uh, Meaden paints but any paint will do uh, with the addition of some white gouache. This is the one I have. Uh, but any white gouache would do, or even Chinese white, if you've only got that. If you've got this set, the Meaden set, it's got um, some titanium white in it, which is perfect for what we're going to be doing. And all I'm going to be doing is mixing white with the colours. And then we're going to be using these as well, the brush pens. Just a few of them, you don't need many do what I'm going to be doing. I'm going to use probably this one here. Uh, yes, I know you're a real brush pen and your colour is neutral grey. That's it, neutral grey. Oh yes, I brought this up as a bit of inspiration for later. This is a, um, a box of, it's empty now, a box of um, what do you call them? Stock cubes. And I noticed the painting on there this morning. It's quite interesting. If you're into painting vegetables, I thought those were quite nicely done. The garlic, the pepper, the basil. And I think what they've done is uh, similar to what I'm going to be doing, which is to do a watercolour background and then some work on top with these brush pens. It's quite effective, I think. It's like illustration. So, I'm gonna clear myself some space here, somehow or other, and we'll get started, hopefully. So, um, out of this set, I've selected um, the colors I'm going to be using, and I'm gonna squeeze a blob of each of the ones that I'm going to use into my palette here. And uh, I'm going on top of what's there already, 
because it's more or less the same. That's Rose from the Meaden set, which um, Quinacridone Rose is uh, what it's often called. This one is Violet, that belongs down there. Um, this, I think, is from another set, and I think that's Alizarin Crimson, so we'll leave that alone for now because there isn't an Alizarin Crimson in this set. Um, this is Sap Green, which is basic. These are all the same with every other set that you might have. Or if you only have um, pans, you can obviously use those as well. Um, I just quite like doing it from tubes. This is Cerulean Blue, which uh, I'm putting on top of what was turquoise underneath, but it doesn't matter because that's pretty darn close. And here we've got um, Gamboge, which is a nice bright yellow. Just popping that on top of the yellow ochre that's underneath, it doesn't matter. Um, pale yellow, some people would have a nervous breakdown at the idea of mixing colours at random and ad hoc, but um, I think the, paint, the paints quite enjoy it. I think they like to meet up with their friends. You never know who you're going to bump into when you go into one of my palettes. You might meet someone you haven't seen for ages. So there we are, they're all ready now. And uh, I'm going to use the um, this squash, which is made by <clears throat> uh, Talons, which is a European company. But you might be able to get it where you live. I think I bought mine off Amazon, so um, no secret about that. And I'm going to use a sheet of paper from this sketchbook. And um, I don't know what paper this is, so I'm sorry, I can't tell you. But I want to use it because I want to use it up. I've had it for a long time and I don't use it. Um, what do they say? Use it or lose it. It seems quite nice. I did um, today's bird for the challenge on here and I thought that worked okay. This is an Australian wattle bird. I did write it down here because I knew I would forget. And uh, he's, uh, I didn't do a tutorial for that, but that was quite fun. And um, the, I, I posted it on the Facebook group and on the membership here on YouTube, if you want to look at the photo. But I just did that with the um, with these things that we talked about earlier, these brush pens. Mine are Poetique ones. I don't get any commission from them or anything. They sent me a set a couple of years ago, which I've been using on and off. And um, as time goes by, I'm getting to like them more and more. So anyway, shut up, Diane, get on with it. Um, I probably should have a little palette to put my white into so that I don't totally contaminate uh, this whole pot, which you would do if you keep doing what I was doing earlier, which is dipping into it. I just need, hang on, I need a, um, a doobie, what's it? A thingamajig, one of these papers. What I need is a palette knife and I'll just scoop a bit of that out, put it there. And, uh, Da, 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 da. Waste not, want not. Okay, so there's my white. This is a little palette by Meaden, so is that. That's another Meaden palette. They're all on our website if you go to our web. Well, I'm not sure if they are, but they will be. But anyway, some of them are. Um, if you go to our website and to the page where it says supplies or materials or shop or whatever we've called it, um, you'll find some of these listed. And I don't think you can beat their prices. So this is what we're aiming for, something like that. And uh, ultimately something like that, which, can you see the difference? I'm doing my old Paris. Do you know what it is yet? Can you tell the difference? Well. You will shortly. Um, I think I'll use a brush for this rather than my fingers. Uh, this is around number seven from Drawwell, but I think, am I going to use a slightly bigger one? I might go for something slightly bigger. And number 11, how does that look? I've got some clean water here, some dirty water here. Uh, for obvious reasons. People talk about these as cups, a cup of water. I've never understood that. It's not a cup, it's a, 
at least a pot. This is an old mason jar. Well, it's not a mason jar. It's like a mason jar. It's a French one, I think. Uh, it could be a kilner from England. could be one of the ones they use here. I can't remember what they call the make here. Um, but anyway, you need a big amount of water to paint with. It's very limiting if you just paint with a silly little cup. I'll put the lid back on that so it doesn't dry out. And I can feel the time ticking away and somebody out there is saying, is she ever going to start painting? Is she ever going to stop yakking and get on with it? Well, I am. And what I'm going to do is the following. I'm going to pick up some of this gouache and I'm going to plunge it into the palette and I'm going to mix some pigment with that. So we end up with basically pink gouache. And then I'm going to be very free and easy and uh, generally messy. And I'm just going to paint splashes of colour, including very various and assorted dog hairs. And as I go along, I'm going to change the colour a little bit. So we've got some nice sort of bluish, um, um, what do you call it, bluish pink there, but I'm going to add some mauve like this. I'm not using very much water um, because I want it to be fairly thick. And what I'm going to do is paint a few strokes, different sizes like that, and then change the color a little bit. So maybe add a bit more of the pink and come in and just give it some variety. And then we just pretend that we've got the stem here, but I'm not going to wash my brush off just yet. And then maybe I'll pick up some red over here and perhaps we'll do some, uh, um, maybe some something over here in this red color. Perhaps, perhaps I need a tiny, tiny smidge more water. There. Just have fun. It's nice. The feeling of the paint going on the paper. If you use fairly smooth paper, this is a heavy sketch paper. I think it's probably about 180 pounds, 200 pounds, something like that. Um, it's not as heavy as the normal watercolour paper, but you don't really, you don't have to use that textured paper. This is fairly smooth. It's not very smooth, it's not hot pressed, but I think I'd probably be inclined to call it sketch paper. I'm just gonna take another palette here to uh, mix in a bit of yellow. Can you see that still? Yes, just about. So I just mixed in some of the gamboge, or the, no, light yellow that was. Um, let's put some centres in these flowers here. And um, let's, in fact, do some orange. I'm just washing off my brush there and I'm going to pick up a little bit more white and pop it into the green. And we want a little bit more yellow in that to make it a bit more realistic. And let's put some stems and some nice big leaves. And put some more over here. Maybe we'll just go a little bit slightly different on the colour, just just for the fun of it, you know, a bit more yellow, change that up again, and then let's put a stem on, no, let's put some stems here, and a big one here, maybe if you add a bit of um, purple, you get a much darker green, like that. And then you can come into these ones and I'm 
the nice thing about um, using gouache is it's what, you know that expression painterly? And it sort of means uh, more like oil painting really. Yeah, the purple mixed with the sap green and the white and a little bit of yellow is, I think that's a pretty fabulous color, look at that. And because we've got different paints on the brush at the same time, we get these wonderful um, mix and match efforts. I don't like to rinse it all off of the brush. I like to keep going with the same color, but um, you have to sometimes, because you want to keep it reasonably clean. So now I'm going to put some light yellow in here. And just, you know, be as free as you can with this. Could put some yellow in these flowers as well, a little bit. Um, let's put some more of the yellow down here. I wonder, I think brown probably would be a good color for the center of um, those. So what we'll do is we'll mix up some brown using purple and yellow and a bit of blue. Because I haven't got any brown here, you notice that? There's no brown, so we'll put some brown in there and then perhaps we'll put some brown in these ones as well. Okay, and clean the brush because we, if we mix that brown in with anything else, we're gonna get a sludgy gray, so we have to be careful about that. And we'll put some nice soft greens in here as well. Okay, so then moving towards the right, I think probably a little bit more pink might be called for. So let's let's pick up some more white gouache and we'll paint some some pink sort of thinking this could be a hydrangea, couldn't it? And then perhaps next to it, we might want maybe, maybe another one of these like this, perhaps a bit more blue, a bit more bluish. Makes me think of the lupins we've had in the garden, these ones. Very pleased with my lupins this year. We we sowed the seeds last year and then we didn't ever get them in the ground, so they didn't grow and we thought that we'd lost them. But this year they've, they've done us proud. I think they're perennial, aren't they? So hopefully, with any luck, they'll come back again next year. They certainly produce marvellous seeds, all those little fluffy, furry, furry, they're furry, like velvet seeds. Right, a bit more white and come into the green. Pick up some yellow to make it more natural. And then we can put some, I did say more natural, not completely natural. And then like we did before, can add a bit of purple to make that green a bit darker. If you fuss and you find that you, um, um, you're afraid of your paints and everything, just use a bigger brush because that will make, um, make you be a bit freer. I think. Okay, put some more leaves down here behind these ones. Maybe change up the color a little bit, add a little bit more yellow to make the green a bit yellower. And vary, don't forget to vary the size. I tend to forget that. I tend to forget to make some of the leaves a bit bigger than others. And but with this method, you can just paint over the top, can't you? It's rather good to just put another leaf in back there. I'm going to put the flower up there now. Don't be tempted to go to a smaller brush. Challenge yourself. 
to stick with it. Let's put something pink up here. Because you're looking for an overall effect, you're not looking for anything specific. This is just a design. You can remember that. It's a good idea. And as you go along, you'll say to yourself, why didn't I why don't I do more of this? I think you'll find you'll say that. You'll find yourself saying that to yourself. Go away, fly. You'll find yourself saying, why don't I, why don't I paint more often? So I've just darkened the yellow down using a little tiny bit of red to give some slightly darker yellow. Then I might use this yellow over here. Um, and paint these yellow flowers. It's nice when you can pick up a little bit of the colour behind and just have it little blend a little bit like that. And now uh, that needs some leaves. Do some slightly thinner ones here, perhaps. Pretend this is a plant that has slightly thinner leaves, a little bit more elegant. And over this side where it's gone a bit more pinky and more washed out. Sorry, my iPad is flashing messages at me and I find that a bit distracting. Um, yeah, you can just let that sort of become a little bit more uh, a little bit softer. There we are. Uh, okay, so now looking at it, we need to keep the balance reasonable, don't we? So we've got quite a lot of pink here, some orange. I think I'm looking for more orange. Uh, so we need this yellow. I need to wash the brush a little bit. This yellow. Yeah, and uh, this ready colour and a good blob of white, a bit more yellow. It's giving us quite a nice peachy colour there, that's, that's good. Let's turn that one into something like um, Chrysanthemums. And maybe if we had a little bit of purple, make a slightly bluer one down here. You can have a lot of fun with this, as you can see. There we are, there's those three. Now I'm looking for leaves down here. I think I might also uh, just make that a little bit lighter and put a few blobs here. Okay, I'll wash the brush. Come in. To the green a bit. Uh, this needs a stem. Put some leaves here. And I think I want to make these leaves a little bit brownish. So add some yellow to the green and a little bit of orange. There we are, have a little stem there as well. And the certain amount of white space is nice because that gives you some air for the plants to breathe. You could paint something like this on um, a tinted paper as well. It would be quite nice, I think. 
And I think we need some more lupins over this side, but not the same color as that. So maybe, how about a nice pale lilac color, something like this one, well, it used to be my favorite color. And then green stem. And some grayish green leaves. And then we are pretty much done. I think that will do. Oh yes, we need a nice dark center here and dark red here and some reddish brown there. And now the next thing we have to do is wait for it to dry. And then we can put in any additional um, marks that we want. I'm not, I'm not sure yet whether I'm actually going to use the pens. I thought I would be going to, but the painting has perhaps gone in a slightly different direction to what I had anticipated. That makes a change. Um, we'll see when it's dry. We'll have a look and see what we want to do. Okay, so for the last stage of this painting, I have taken a photocopy. Um, if you have a photocopy, I think it's a really good idea before you go in for the last stages. Um, then you can try it out, what you're planning to do, and um, all is not lost if it goes wrong. And I think that's a wonderful thing to be able to do. What I have in mind is that I will use a grey, this is neutral grey, but when you put grey, neutral grey, a pen like this over top of what you've been painting, um, it picks up the color, it doesn't pick up the color, but it emphasizes the color that's underneath. So I was planning to use this to put in some veins on some of the leaves. That's basically what I was thinking of doing. And also to emphasize some shadow areas. So for example, um, if I wanted to enhance the shape of some of the flowers, for example, like this a little bit, um, you can use this for any, any of them, uh, any of the colors, you can just, you know, whatever. And you could really, if you wanted to, um, get quite uh, detailed in, in what you did. So this is just basically a, a hint for changing the tonal value of the painting without having to do it all over again. So you can do half that leaf like that, you see, then you, this is in shadow and that's less and here we can go round if you wanted to i don't think i'll do this but you could um i won't do it because it will take far too long but you could really um give a lot more shape to these things and i quite like it loose the way it is it's turned out reasonably well but sometimes you can really rescue a painting that hasn't gone all that well so i'll just do a few of these veins on the original here and uh, see how that works. So where you've got a nice light colored leaf, you can put in some veins using this light gray and so on. So I think maybe it might be better to use a slightly darker one on this, on this painting. It doesn't show up as well as it does on the photocopy. Um, and also, of course, the other thing you can do if you want, you can come in with your white pen and you can put some veins in the leaves using, using white. I don't want to overdo that because I think we've already got quite a lot of lights in it, so it doesn't really need too much of that. And uh, basically, I'm going to call that pretty much done. It's only a sketch. It's not realistic, but I think it's quite pretty. I'm quite pleased with that for a very early Sunday morning painting. And I hope you have a 
give it a go. Like I said, just to quickly recap, gouache, white gouache, this is a nice one. This one is, uh, as I said, by Tarlands, and you can get this from Amazon. All I was using was my Meaden watercolor set, as I happen to have it, and it's very good. But um, I'll put a list of the colors that I used in the description below and on the website, because I'll do a blog on this one. So um, they're just ordinary colors, and nothing special about them. Um, just ordinary colors, but a limited palette. And I think really what we did here was we learned a little bit about mixing colors and how to paint a small painting with a big brush. So I'll let you go and I'll see you again soon. Don't forget to like and subscribe and turn on notifications, play the YouTube game and give us some, uh, give us a like. And um, what's the other thing? Become a member of Patreon or YouTube uh, membership. Um, just watching, sorry, slightly distracted watching the sheep eating the oak tree. Could you leave that alone, please, Larry? Um, and uh, comments below, please, as many as you like. I can't answer all the comments because um, life's too short, but I do try. And if you have a question, I'll try to get to that. And also we have the Facebook group. So if you pop along over there um, and if you are a member, you'll get access to my uh, font of knowledge, um, if you like to call it that, which you probably don't. Uh, yeah, so I'm going to let you go now. Enough wittering, and I'll see you again soon. Bye for now, everybody. Bye-bye.